In the late 1750s, many groups laid claim to the fertile Ohio River Valley. The main thing about the Ohio Valley is that it's, it's very, very good farmland. The French wanted to connect their territory of Louisiana to their territory of Canada through the Ohio River Valley. But individual colonies in the east also had a stake in this rich area. In places like Virginia and in New England, there were people who had invested heavily in speculating on this land that they did not yet own, but which they thought they would eventually own. In 1754, Virginia's governor, Robert Dinwiddie, sent a militia, led by 21-year-old George Washington, to claim a portion of Ohio for Virginia. About 40 miles from Fort Duquesne, a powerful fort on the mouth of the Ohio River, Washington and his men surprised a detachment of French troops and killed their leader. This act sparked the first real world war. For seven years, across seven seas, France, Spain, Austria, and Russia fought England and Prussia. In America, we call it the French and Indian War, but in Europe, they call it the Seven Years' War. That's how long it lasted. The British and the French were the two superpowers, and they fought in India, in Europe, in the West Indies, and in America. The Ohio River Valley was the staging ground for the battle between the French and British. After Washington's attack on the French in the Ohio Valley, British officials feared reprisals from angry French colonists living on British lands. So they preemptively drove French residents from their colony in Acadia, now known as Nova Scotia, to Louisiana where their descendants are known as Cajuns. In the Ohio River Valley, the French relied heavily on their Native American allies to fight the British. That's why it's called the French and Indian War. More than half of the Indians had supported the French, and they weren't too friendly to the British, and the British did not know how to handle the Indians. In 1756, French and Indian troops defeated British General Edward Braddock when he attempted to take Fort Duquesne. But the war turned when English Secretary of State William Pitt took personal command of the Army and Navy. British troops soon captured Fort Lewisburg in Nova Scotia, a critical French stronghold. Other forts throughout the American frontier began to fall into the hands of the British, including Forts Duquesne, Ticonderoga, Crown Point, and Niagara. But final victory didn't come until 1759, when the British Army, led by Major General James Wolfe, attacked Quebec. During the fight, General Wolfe was mortally wounded, but upon hearing of the British victory, he sighed, Now, God be praised, I will die in peace. After the French defeat, the 1763 Treaty of Paris drew the new lines of control in North America. The British raised their flag over Florida and Canada. France had to give New Orleans and parts of Louisiana to Spain to pay for its support during the war. But the Treaty of Paris had a major impact on the Indians. They could no longer count on France as an ally in a possible war against Britain or the American colonists. 